Homeostasis is biology's second law, but what's homeostasis? If you've ever studied biology, you've probably heard the term used in its narrowest sense, the tendency of living systems to regulate a certain property, like body temperature. Our body temperatures, for example, stay at a fairly steady 37 degrees Celsius, about 99 degrees Fahrenheit, no matter whether the outside temperature is cold, hot, or just right. This is temperature homeostasis, and it requires an active process. As it gets colder, for example, your body loses heat at a faster rate. To keep your body temperature steady, there has to be some way of sensing the increased heat loss and to initiate steps to either generate more heat to offset the loss or to reduce the losses themselves. The regulation of your house temperature with a thermostat hooked up to a furnace and air conditioner is a good analogy to this process. Homeostasis isn't limited to body temperature, though. The body regulates a multitude of other properties, including the acidity of the blood, the total water content in the body, the strength of bones, appetite, and even cognitive ability. Homeostasis is a much deeper concept than this, however. The idea of homeostasis is generally traced to this man. This is the French physiologist Claude Bernard. He never himself used the term homeostasis. That was coined in the 1930s by the American physiologist Walter Buchanan. But he did formalize it with a famous aphorism. In English, this translates as the constancy of the internal environment is the condition for a free and independent life. There's quite a bit packed into that sentence, and we'll explore more of it momentarily. Let it suffice for now to say that Bernard's aphorism reflects something very important about his intent. He regarded homeostasis not as some derived characteristic of an animal, but as a fundamental property of life. In modern times, we tend to forget this, and this has led to a number of misconceptions about what homeostasis is and what it means. To see why homeostasis is biology's second law, indeed to see just how strange an idea it is, we need to set those misconceptions straight. We'll build our discussion around what may be one of the world's most famous rock formations, the Finger of God, located in the southern African country of Namibia, just east of the tiny town of Asab, on the western fringe of the Kalahari Desert. Here's the location on Google Earth. You can't see the finger of God now because it collapsed in 1988. But before it did, it was perhaps the most photographed rock formation in the world. As you can see, the finger of God, or the Mokorob, as it should properly be called, was a column of sedimentary sandstone sitting atop a layer of mudstone below. As winds and rain have eroded the rock, the softer mudstone has eroded away faster, leaving the Mokorob perched precariously on its pedestal. In 1988, the thing finally collapsed, probably toppled by a freak windstorm, and here's what it looks like today. We're using the Mokorob because it illustrates many of the misconceptions that have built up around the concept of homeostasis. The first common misconception is that homeostasis represents a form of equilibrium. That idea conflates steadiness of a property with regulation of a property, and there's a pretty big difference. Before it toppled, the Makarov's position was steady in that it stayed in one place, didn't dance around or anything like that, but it was not at equilibrium, it was in disequilibrium. In any physical system, disequilibrium exists whenever the system is held at some state other than its lowest energy state possible. In the case of the Makarov, its lowest energy state was as a pile of rubble, sitting as close as possible to the Earth's center of mass. That finally happened in 1988, when the thing toppled over. Prior to that, it was in disequilibrium. This illustrates an important point about physical systems that are alive. In any living system, equilibrium is a meaningless concept. A living system sitting at equilibrium is not alive, it's dead, the very antithesis of living. In short, equilibrium is death. If the Mukora was at disequilibrium, at least until 1988, 
How did that work? Well, it was a straightforward matter of a balance of opposing forces. The Makorov has a mass, which we can place somewhere at its center. Let's say it's here. Gravity acting on the center of the mass will impart a downward force to the Makorov. We call this weight. If it's unopposed, this weight will pull the Makorov toward an equilibrium state, in this case, the pile of rubble on the ground. While it stood, this downward force was opposed by an equal and opposite upward force exerted by the mudstone base. As long as those two forces were nicely lined up and opposed, the Makorov stood in what we might call a stable or a static disequilibrium. When that freak windstorm came through, it probably set the Makorov rocking slightly on its pedestal. This finally pushed the two forces out of alignment with one another. As a result, the Makorov finally toppled to equilibrium. Systems of static disequilibria do exist in living systems, but a static disequilibrium does not represent homeostasis either. This is because it takes no work to keep a system at static disequilibrium in place. As long as the forces balance, it will stay that way forever. In fact, it will take work to shift such a system toward equilibrium. Now we can get to the nub of the matter. Homeostasis is also a form of disequilibrium, but it's a special and rather strange kind. We can use the Makora to demonstrate this, but to do so, we need to let our imaginations run free a bit. Imagine now the Makora is not a solid mass of rock, but is a huge assemblage of sand grains, not held together as they are in the actual rock, but dissociated from one another, each grain free to move independently of every other. If gravity had its way, these sand grains would fall out of the rock formation, just as sand would fall out of a hopper to collect at the bottom of the hill. And if nothing else happened, the Makorob would, of course, disappear. What would be needed then for the Makorob to persist? Here's where things get very strange. First, there would have to be some means of gathering sand grains from the surroundings and then wafting them up into place in the Makorob. As long as new sand moved into the Makorob, as quickly as gravity dragged old sand out, you could maintain a sand cloud of some sort there. But what we're maintaining is the Makorob with its distinctive size and shape, not just any old cloud of sand. To do this, each sand grain coming in would have to come to occupy a highly specified place, each replacing a sand grain at the specific site it had occupied before falling away. What I'm describing here is a kind of disequilibrium, all right, but it's a so-called dynamic disequilibrium. Unlike the static kind, which requires no work to sustain, a dynamic disequilibrium must do work to persist. And it's not only work, it's knowledge. The dynamic disequilibrium that is the Makorob must contain within itself an awareness of what it is, an awareness of what it's supposed to be, and a means of guiding a flow of matter through it in a way that keeps the two in agreement. This is exactly what living systems do. The me that's standing here now is channeling a flow of oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and other elements through me, and organizing them so that the me standing here now looks the same as the me that was standing here a month ago, and the me that might be standing here a month from now, even though they're all really different versions of me. That persistence of a specified dynamic disequilibrium is homeostasis. As I've said, it's a very strange concept.